Hello students, welcome to my channel Learning History Made Easy. In today's video, I will be explaining about the later Vedic period. Before going into the video, if anyone is seeing the channel for the first time or if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do subscribe and share it with your friends and also click the bell button to receive notifications whenever I upload new videos. So without wasting time, let us get into today's video. So as I have told, today's video is about later Vedic period. In the last video, we have seen about the early Vedic or Rig Vedic period. So here we are going to see about the later Vedic period. The time period will be almost from about 1000 to 600 BC. This period was marked by the expansion of Aryans. So in later Vedic period, we can see that uh, the Aryans, ex, uh, the expansion of Aryans to parts of eastern Uttar Pradesh, eastern Uttar Pradesh, northern Bihar and parts of eastern Rajasthan. Rajasthan. So during the uh, later Vedic period, we see the expansion of Aryans to parts of eastern Uttar Pradesh northern Bihar and parts of eastern Rajasthan. So the history of later Vedic period is mainly based on the Vedic text. So we can see about the sources of later Vedic period will be mainly Vedic texts. Okay? And these Vedic texts were compiled after the age of Rig Veda. The Bharatas and Purus. So if you see about the major tribes during that time, the Bharatas and Purus the two major tribes, they combined and thus formed the Kuru people. Okay, Bharatas and Purus, they were the two major tribes. They combined and formed the Kuru people. Initially, they lived between the Saraswati and the Shadwati just on the fringe of the dome. So mainly they were uh, living uh, between the Saraswati river and the Drishadvati, this was just on the fringe of the Dobe area. Soon the Kurus occupied, after this time the Kurus they occupied Delhi and the upper reaches of the Dobe. And they, after they occupied Delhi, the area called Kurukshetra, so it came to be called as Kurukshetra, means the land of the Kurus, land of Kurus. So that is how uh, their uh, occupation, the um, area of uh, the Kuru people came to be known as. So the Bharatas and Purus were the two major tribes. They combined and formed the Kuru people. And they were, for, uh, in the initially they were living between Saraswati and Rishadvati on the fringes of the Dobe. Soon they occupied Delhi and the upper reaches of the Dobe and the area called Kurukshetra, that is the land of the Kurus developed. Now, uh, after that, the Panchalas, the Panchalas were also a composite class. So, we saw about Kurus. Now, next is Panchalas, they were also a composite class whose territory roughly corresponds to uh, modern day Bareilly, Bareilly, Badaun, Farukabad, and adjoining districts. These Panchalas, they were a composite class and their territory roughly uh, in today's time, roughly it corresponds to modern day Bareilly, Badaun, Farukabad and the adjoining districts. The major social political centers of the period was the Kuru Panchala Janapata of the Ganga Yamuna Dob. So if you see the major uh, social political centers of this period, social political centers of this period if you see we can see it is a, a mainly it is the Kuru Panchala Janapada Kuru Panchala Janapada of the Ganga Yamuna Dob. The history of the Kuru tribe is important for the battle of Bharata. So if you see the history of Kuru tribe it is uh, important for the battle of Bharata which is the principal theme of the great epic of Mahabharata. Now towards the end of later Vedic period the people spread in large number from the Dobe further east. So 
towards the end of the period, end of a later Vedic period, if you see, end of a later Vedic period, we can see that the people spread in large numbers from this Dwob area further east to Koshala in uh, eastern uh, UP and to Videha in northern Bihar. Northern Bihar. So this is how the people of the later Vedic period spread to different parts. So this was a basic, um, uh, por, uh, what to say, basic history of the later Vedic people. Now let us see the social institutions of a later Vedic period. Social institutions of later Vedic period. So if you see the social institution in family, uh, family the basic unit, one sees the increasing power of the father, increasing power of father, father's power started to increase who could even disinherit his son. The father was having the power even to disinherit his son. If you see the case of princely families, princely families, the right of primogeniture was getting stronger. Okay, In princely families, if you see, the right of primogeniture was getting even more stronger. Okay? And male ancestors came to be worshipped. Male ancestors came to be worshipped during the later Vedic period. So you can see the importance of uh, or the male dominance in the society. Uh, father's power started to increase in princely families. Right of primogeniture became stronger and male ancestors started to be worshipped. And naturally with the, all these the position of women became lower. Women started to have lower position compared to Rig Vedic or early Vedic period. Here the position of women became much lower. Women could not attend the Sabha. Okay? They could not attend the Sabha and were excluded from inheritance. And women also they were excluded from inheritance inheritance and along with shudras they could not own property women were not allowed to own property they could not own property they were not given the right of inheritance they, they were not allowed to attend sabha and they could not own property same like shudras women were not allowed to inherit property so that is how we can say that the position of women became lower uh, and regarding education of uh, women, if you see education, which some of them received, not everyone, mainly some belonging to a uh, royal family may have received, which some of them received was of higher order as it enabled them to take part in uh, philosophical discussions at royal court. Okay, Only some received education. So if you see some examples of uh, learned women, uh, that is we can scholarly women, Maitreyi, and Gargi were gifted women scholars of this period. Gargi and Maitreyi. The rule of marriage also underwent a great change. Regarding marriage, uh, the rule of marriage also underwent a great change during this time. And uh, it was uh, towards rigidity. And there was instances of child marriage. Okay. Child marriage instances were there and the rules of marriage became more rigid, more strict. And Varna system also developed during this time. Varna system. The later Vedic society came to be divided into four Varnas. Okay. These were all things which were not much evident in Rig Vedic time. So here Varna system, uh, later Vedic society came to be divided based on the four Varnas. Which were the four Varnas? They were the Brahmanas. Second Varna was the Kshatriya. Then we have Vaishyas. And the last Shudras. Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra. The growing cult sacrifices enormously added to the power of Brahmanas. They were having more power. And initially... They were only one of the 16 classes of priests. In the beginning, initially, they were only among the one of the 16 classes 
of priests. That time they did not have much power, but gradually they overshadowed the other priestly group and emerged the most important or most powerful class. That was a gradual development which happened. So this was a uh, Varna system which developed in later Vedic period. So before moving on to the next point, let us just see the points which we have studied till now. Later Vedic period, 1000 to 600 BC. This period was marked by the expansion of Aryans to parts of eastern Uttar Pradesh, northern Bihar and parts of eastern Rajasthan. The history of the later Vedic period is based mainly on the Vedic texts which were compiled after the age of the Rig Veda. The Bharatas and Purus, the two major tribes combined and thus formed the Kuru people. Initially, they lived between the Saraswati and the Drishadvati just on the fringe of the Dobe. Soon the Kurus occupied Delhi and the upper reaches of the Dobe, the area called Kurukshetra or the land of the Kurus. The Panchalas were also a composite class whose territory roughly corresponds to the modern day Bareilly, Badaun, Farukabad and adjoining districts. The major social political centers of this period was the Kuru Panchala Janapata of the Ganga Yamuna Dobe. The history of the Kuru tribe is important for the Battle of Bharata, which is the principal theme of the great epic called Mahabharata. Towards the end of the later Vedic period, the Vedic people spread in large numbers from Dobe further east to Koshala in eastern UP and to Videha in northern Bihar. Social Institutions In the family, one notices the increasing power of the father who could even disinherit his son. In princely families, the right of primogeniture was getting stronger. Male ancestors came to be worshipped. Women were generally given a lower position. They could not attend Sabha and were excluded from inheritance and along with Shudras could not own property. The education which some of them received was of higher order as it enabled them to take prominent part in philosophical disputations at royal courts. Maitreyi and Gargi gifted women scholars. The rules of marriage underwent a great change towards greater rigidity and there were instances of child marriage. Varna system. The later Vedic society came to be divided into four Varnas called the Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas and Shudras. The growing cult of sacrifices enormously added to the power of the Brahmanas. Initially, they were only one of the 16 classes of priests but gradually they overshadowed the other priestly groups and emerged as the most important class. Now let us uh, continue with the social uh, setup of later Vedic period. Now we have seen that the Brahmanas attained an important position. So the Brahmanas conducted rituals and sacrifices for their clients. The main duty of Brahmanas was they conducted rituals and sacrifices both for clients and themselves. For their clients and themselves they conducted rituals and sacrifices. They prayed for the, uh, the success of their patron. They prayed for the success of their uh, patron in war and in return the king pledged not to do any harm to them. And the second class, so Brahmana's main duty was doing rituals and sacrifices for clients and themselves and they also prayed for the success of patron in war. In return the king uh, pledged that they will not do any harm to these Brahmanas. Now the second class was Kshatriyas had supremacy in temporal affairs. Okay, They had supremacy in temporal affairs as the Brahmanas had in spiritual matters. So Brahmanas uh, mainly uh, dealt with spiritual matters and Kshatriyas mainly had their supremacy in temporal affairs. Now regarding the third class that is the Vaishyas constituted the common people. The common people and they were assigned to do agriculture, cattle breeding, all the kind of normal work the Vaishyas were doing. Some of them were also artisans. They were artisans, farmers, cattle breeders, all were included, all common people were included in Vaishyas. Towards the end of Vedic period, they also began to do trade. So here, the Vaishyas, we can see they were farmers, uh, cattle breeders, uh, breeders, 
some were artisans then towards the end they were also doing trade traders were also there the vaishyas appear to be the only tribute pay, pay, tribute payers in the vedic time the vaishyas were the group of people who paid tribute during the vedic times the kshatriyas are represented as living on the tribute collected from the vaishyas these kshatriyas they lived on lived on this tribute which were collected from the vaishyas all these three higher varna shared one common feature that is brahmanas kshatriyas and vaishyas had one common feature that is they were entitled for upanayana upanayana okay what is upanayana upanayana is the investiture with the sacred thread sorry investiture with sacred thread the sacred thread wearing ceremony these three classes were allowed or these three classes were entitled or were given the right for upanayana that is investiture with the sacred thread according to the vedic mantra only one class was not entitled uh, entitled for the upanayana uh, upanayana ceremony that is the fourth varna shudra this fourth varna they were deprived of a sacred thread ceremony deprived of sacred thread ceremony they were not allowed to uh, do upanayana or the sacred thread ceremony and with this big and imposition uh, um, imposition of disabilities on the shudra so that is why the shudras had a lot of uh, we can say disabilities because of this they were not allowed uh, to recite the gayatri mantra okay shudras were not uh, sorry the shudras they were not allowed okay not allowed to recite the gayatri mantra gayatri mantra okay and the change of caste though was very unusual was not as yet impossible change of caste was not impossible change of caste was not impossible but the change of caste was very unusual okay it was not common it was not impossible the higher caste could intermarry with lower ones so the, if you see the rules it is like this higher class can intermarry intermarry with lower ones okay can they can intermarry with lower ones but marriage with shudras is not approved but if any higher class want to marry a shudra that is not allowed marriage with shudra was not allowed all other castes can uh, other castes that is a higher caste can intermarry with lower one but marriage with shudra was uh, not approved shudras were denied the right to perform sacrifices okay shudras were also not allowed not allowed to perform perform sacrifices so this was the condition of shudras so they were deprived of sacred thread ceremony they were not allowed to recite gayatri mantra change of caste was not impossible uh, and um, higher caste can um, uh, intermarry with lower ones but marriage with shudra was not allowed and the shudras were not allowed to perform sacrifices so this was the condition of the shudras the institution of gotra appears in later vedic time okay gotra the institution of gotra appears in later vedic time literally gotra means cow pen cow pen means place where cattle belonging to the entire clan is kept place where cattle is kept okay cattle is kept belonging to the entire clan all cattles they are kept in a cow pen that is a basic literal meaning of uh, gotra but in course of time it signified the descent from a common ancestor later it the word meaning was descent from common ancestor that is uh, if some people are belong to the same gotra that means they all belong to the common ancestor they have all descendants from the common ancestor people began to practice gotra exogamy so what is gotra exogamy gotra exogamy means marriage outside gotra marriage outside 
gotra that is people from the same gotra cannot marry so they practiced gotra exogamy that is marriage marrying outside the gotra so that was the system of or institution of gotra which appeared in the later vedic period literal meaning is scope and place where uh, cattle is kept but in course of time it signified the descent from a common ancestor and people began to practice gotra exogamy that is marrying outside gotra because marrying inside gotra was not allowed now the ashramas or four stage of life was not well established in vedic times if you see the ashramas or the four stages of a life this was not well established during the vedic uh, times the post vedic texts speak of four ashramas so if you see about the four ashramas the post vedic text that speaks of the four ashramas so which are the four ashramas or four wage stages of life first one is brahmachari which is the student life second one is grihastha that is householder the third one is vanaprastha vanaprastha is the life of a hermit and the last one is sanyasin or an ascetic okay who completely renounced the world so these were the four stages of life or four ashramas uh, according to the post vedic text and in this ashramas only the first three are clearly defined in later vedic text the first three these three are clearly defined in later vedic text okay and the last or the fourth stage was not well established throughout the vedic period uh, if you see this last stage was not well established now throughout the vedic period if you see the system of education education was imparted orally okay it was more of an oral education imparted orally and was mainly based on shruti and smriti based on shruti and smriti so that was the system of education and the list of subjects so which were the subjects which were taught during that time shows a wide range of knowledge embracing so not only vedas so vedas were there then itihasa was there itihasa puranas grammar as well as astronomy military science dialectics etc so all these were the subjects vedas itihasas puranas grammar astronomy military science dialectics all were the list of subjects now development of character if you see uh, the main aim of education development of character constituted the aim and moral training became the backbone of educational system development of character moral training all these became the backbone of the educational system during later vedic age so these are the points regarding the later vedic age uh, i will just explain the points we'll go through the points once more they conducted rituals and sacrifices for their clients and for themselves that is brahmanas they prayed for the success of their patron in war and in return the king pledged not to do any harm to them the second class of kshatriyas had the supremacy in temporal affairs as brahmanas had in spiritual matters the vaishyas constituted the common people and they were assigned to do agriculture cattle breeding etc some of them were also artisans towards the end of the vedic period they began to engage in trade the vaishyas appear to be the only tribute payers in later vedic times the kshatriyas are represented as living on the tributes collected from the vaishyas as these three higher varna shared one common feature they were entitled to upanayana or investiture with the sacred thread according to the vedic mantra the fourth varna shudra was deprived of the sacred thread ceremony and with this big and the imposition of disabilities on the shudras the shudras were also not allowed to recite the gayatri mantra 
Change of caste, though very unusual, was not as yet impossible. The higher caste could intermarry with the lower ones, but marriage with Shudras was not approved. Shudras were denied the rights to perform sacrifices. The institution of Gotra appeared in later Vedic times. Literally, it means the cow pen or the place where cattle belonging to the entire clans are kept, but in course of time, it signified the descent from a common ancestor. People began to practice Gotra exogamy, marrying outside the Gotra. Ashramas or four stages of life were not well established in Vedic times. The post-Vedic texts speak of four ashramas, Brahmachari or student, Grihastha or householder, Vanaprastha or hermit, and Sanyasin or ascetic who completely renounced the worldly life. Only the first three are clearly defined in the Vedic text. The last or the fourth stage was not well established. Throughout the Vedic period, education was imparted orally and was mainly based on Shruti and Smriti. The list of subjects for study shows a wide range of knowledge embracing not only Vedas, Itihasa, Purana and Grama, but also astronomy, military, science, dialectics, etc. Development of character constituted the aim and moral training, the backbone of educational system. So I hope you have understood all the points very clearly. I will be continuing with the later Vedic uh, period in the next video also. So if you have any doubts, you can ask in the comment section. And also don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. Your likes and shares will be of a great encouragement for me to make more and more videos. So I hope to see you all soon in the coming video. Thank you for watching.